Process Lasso, a name that has frequently surfaced in my discussions, comment sections, and various tech forums online. There's a significant number of users who vouch for this program, attributing their enhanced gaming performance to it, particularly with modern desktop processors that utilize hybrid architectures, small e-cores, big cores, 3D vCache. Despite the buzz, I realized that there's a scarcity of comprehensive benchmark videos on YouTube that test Process Lasso's impact on performance, so I decided to take the matters into my own hands. In this video, Video, I'll put Process Lasso to the test to see if it truly delivers the performance boost that many claim. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. This video serves as a sequel to a recent one where we delved into Intel's Application Optimizer, or APO software, launched in tandem with their latest 14th gen CPUs. I'll drop a link to that video in the description for those interested in a deep dive. But for those looking for a quick summary, Intel introduced the software claiming it enhances performance on their hybrid CPUs, which employ a hybrid architecture with substantial P-cores and smaller efficient E-cores. APO helps optimize the scheduler to ensure thread management is efficiently handled so that games aren't parking the wrong cores and therefore decrease performance. So far, Intel had only added two games to the list which were Metro Exodus and Rainbow Six Siege, and some reviewers when they tested APO did see a substantial boost in performance. However, Intel has drawn criticism for its restrictive approach, limiting APO's compatibility to just 14th gen, specifically the i7-14700K and the i9-14900K. They also did come out with a statement that said they had no plans to bring APO to 13th gen Raptor Lake CPUs. Even though I firmly believe that Intel should extend APO compatibility to previous gen parts like the 13900K given their identical architecture, it's not a significant setback for those owners. If necessary, they can still optimize their CPUs by disabling e-cores through the BIOS. Not an ideal solution considering when you need the e-cores you'll need to go back into the BIOS and then re-enable them, whereas APO just works within Windows. But nevertheless, you do have some options here, and the same goes for hyperthreading. I tested both eCores off and also hyperthreading disabled. I saw from my results Metro Exodus was indeed a game which saw benefits from doing those tweaks. In the midst of online discussions on platforms like Reddit and in the comment sections of my YouTube videos, a software called Process Lasso frequently came up. Developed by Bitsum, I first heard about it when AMD launched the Ryzen 3000 series based on Zen 2, which brought chiplets to the mainstream segment. Take the Ryzen 9 3900X for example, which features two core chiplets. One of the CCDs was of superior quality, resulting in higher boost clocks. Many users suggested leveraging Process Lasso to ensure games run on the best cores or the superior CCD for enhanced gaming performance. With the release of Intel's Alder Lake, which employs a hybrid design, I've noticed a recurring suggestion. Use Process Lasso to ensure games run exclusively on the P cores. This discussion resurfaced when AMD launched the Ryzen 9 7950X 3 3D, reviewers observed that some of the games just didn't show a significant improvement over the standard 7950X until they disabled the non-3D vCache CCD. This forced the game to use the CCD with vCache, indicating a scheduling issue. I've heard from both AMD and Intel that they have worked with Microsoft and continue to work with them to ensure that the scheduler knows which threads to assign to the software, but it's not perfect nor 100% consistent. Hence, we often see people suggesting user intervention, whether you tweak settings in your BIOS, or use a software within Windows like Process Lasso or Intel's newly released APO. Interestingly, despite the frequent mentions of Process Lasso, I struggled to find any comprehensive benchmarking videos demonstrating its impacts across a range of games. The majority of content seemed to focus on setup tutorials rather than actual benchmarks, with individuals sharing their personal settings and claiming it boosted performance. In my previous video, I said using Process Lasso was something I never personally tested, but had the desire to test for quite a while, and I had finally did it. So that's really what this video is about. We're going to be taking a look at some gaming benchmarks that I conducted on my test bench to see if using Process Lasso can really help boost performance as many claim it does. And trust me, some of these results will surprise you. Setting up Process Lasso is quite straightforward. You simply download the program from their website and install it 
like any other software. At first glance, the interface may seem a bit intimidating with all the information displayed, but once you know what to look for, it's actually quite user friendly. For my test bench, which uses an i9-13900K, we'll be using Process Lasso to ensure that our games run solely on the P cores by bypassing the E cores. Helpfully, Bitsum do have an article on their website showing you how this can be achieved, and they do go through multiple different methods. I first tried using the efficiency mode off method, as that's the first one presented in the article, and I found that it didn't really do anything to the 13900K. I could still see the same usage on the E cores that was observed without you running Process Lasso. Next, I tried using the second method, which involved using the CPU affinity rule. This option proved to be exactly what I was looking for. To use the CPU affinity rule, you'll need to launch your game first, then Alt tab out of it. In Process Lasso, locate the process corresponding to your game. In this case, we have Hogwarts Legacy running. Right click on the process, select CPU affinity, then CPU sets, which will open a new window. In this window, you'll find an option labeled P cores only. Selecting this will deselect all available E cores, ensuring the game runs exclusively on the P cores. I wanted to show you guys what this looks like with a game running without Process Lasso enabled and with it enabled. Here we have Remnant 2 running which is a fairly multi-threaded game, and here we can see that all the P cores and E cores are being utilized. However, once we enable the CPU affinity rule, you'll notice minimal to no utilization on the E cores, with the game running solely on the P cores. You might be wondering why I'm testing this again, given that I've already showcased performance with E cores disabled in a separate video. The difference here is that in that video, I had completely disabled the E cores through the BIOS. In contrast, in this test, the E cores are still running and handling all the background processing. I'm just preventing the game from utilizing them within Windows using a software. This is the approach I used to test 12 modern games at 1080p and 1440p to see if there would be any significant performance boost or potential regression. Before we dive into our for our benchmarks, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of our test system specifications. For our CPU, we've got an Intel Core i9-13900K which has two P-cores running at 5.7GHz, and the rest of them are running at 5.6GHz. E-cores are clocked at 4.6GHz, and the ring is clocked to 5GHz. For our RAM, we've got 32GB of Team Group's T-Create memory which is running at 7200 mega transfers with tuned timings. The GPU is an MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio which is also overclocked. For full system specs, you guys can check the video description down below. Let's kick things off with our first game, Alan Wake 2. Interestingly, the performance remained consistent whether or not Process Lasso was running, at both 1080p and 1440p. Given that this game is primarily GPU bound and not as heavily threaded as some of the others we'll be examining, it's not surprising that manipulating its core affinity didn't impact performance. Regrettably, our next title didn't yield the same results, if at all, much to my disappointment. If you've seen my previous video, you'll recall our discussion about Metro Exodus, one of the games on Intel's APO list. I had noted that this game experienced a performance boost when we disabled E-cores and hyper-threading through the BIOS. However, using Process Lasso rendered the game virtually unplayable. As you can see from the footage, it's essentially a slideshow. Our only modification was using Process Lasso to prevent the game from using the E-cores, and that alone broke the game. This was not the outcome I had anticipated. I expected a performance uplift similar to when I had disabled E-cores through the BIOS. So for this game, I would definitely advise against using Process Lasso. Next up, we have Starfield at 1080p, the performance remains largely unchanged, albeit with a slight dip in our 1% lows. At 1440p, while our average FPS remains consistent, our 1% lows see a decrease of around 12%, which isn't ideal. With Remnant 2, we observed that the performance remains unaffected, regardless of whether Process Lasso is in use or not, so I guess that's a positive takeaway. Our next game, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, presents a significant performance regression. At 1080p, we find that the performance is considerably better without Process Lasso running, with a 12% increase in average FPS and a substantial 57% increase in the 1% lows. At 1440p, we become more GPU bound, the margins do narrow, but the performance difference remains Remain significant. We're looking at a 9% better average FPS and a 35% increase in the 1% lows. Given this severe performance regression, I would advise against using Process Lasso for this title as well. Unfortunately, our struggles persist with The Last of Us, to the point where
where I would argue the game becomes virtually unplayable due to the severe performance regression. A 10% decrease in our average FPS might not seem substantial, but our 1% lows are absolutely decimated. We're looking at a staggering 148% improvement in FPS when not running Process Lasso. At 1440p, we observe the same margin for our average FPS, but our 1% lows remained abysmal. It's unclear why some of these games are behaving this way, but it's certainly an eye-opener. Next on our list is Resident Evil 4 Remake. Interestingly, this game shows no changes in performance at either resolution when using Process Lasso. A similar trend is observed with Baldur's Gate 3. The gaming experience remains virtually identical, regardless of whether Process Lasso is enabled or not. So there's not much else to discuss here. Hogwarts Legacy follows suit, performing consistently with or without Process Lasso. While we don't see any performance regression, there's also no noticeable improvement. So for these last few games, we're looking at completely neutral results. Next we have Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and unfortunately the news isn't good. At 1080p we're seeing an approximately 11% difference in our average FPS and 4% difference in our 1% lows. At 1440p these margins actually increased to 13% and 9% respectively. Cyberpunk 2077 is another addition to our list of games with disappointing results. At 1080p the performance drops quite substantially. Without Process Lasso we observed a 23% better average FPS and our 1% lows were a significant 32% higher. At 1440p, likely due to being more GPU bound, the margins narrow but there's still a noticeable performance hit. The last game we're going to be taking a look at is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022, and while our performance doesn't improve, at least we didn't see any drastic drops either, and that's really about it. For our 12 game average, the results practically speak for themselves. At 1080p without lasso, we were getting 12% higher FPS on our average frame rate and 18% for our 1% lows. Then at 1440p, we see an 11% and 16% difference respectively. After reviewing all these results, I personally can't find any compelling reasons to use this program, as it doesn't seem to boost performance, at least not with our test system. In several games, we observed a performance drop, and a couple of titles were essentially unplayable. For the games where we didn't see a performance drop, the results were virtually identical to when we weren't running Process Lasso, so it seems that either there's no benefit, or performance simply plummets. I can't see any reason why someone would opt to use this configuration. As for those who reported better performance online, I'm not disputing their claims, as I don't know their test system configurations. However, for my system, this software clearly doesn't provide any tangible benefits. This is why I always encourage you all to test things for yourself rather than blindly accepting someone's word for it based on a forum comment or without seeing any concrete results. I must admit, I am a bit taken back by these results. I didn't anticipate any dramatic performance improvements going into this, especially considering our previous tests with eCores disabled through the BIOS, which did result in performance regression in many titles. What I didn't foresee, however, was that some of the games would become virtually unplayable. I suspect this is due to forcing only P cores, which is likely creating a conflict with the game's thread management. In contrast, when you disable E cores in the BIOS, the OS and software essentially perceive an 8 core 16 thread CPU, rendering the E cores invisible and thus avoiding any scheduling issue. So if you're running a modern Intel CPU with E cores, based on my experience, I would recommend leaving it as is. This approach has consistently yielded the best results in my tests. Whether you're considering Considering disabling eCourse through the BIOS or using Process Lasso, I would advise against it. However, if you absolutely must run your games on the P-Cores, then opting for the BIOS method would be the way to go. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna do it for this one. Remember, every system is unique and results can vary. Always test things for yourself rather than taking someone's word for it. Stay curious, keep experimenting, and most importantly, enjoy your gaming experience. We'll touch base in the next one. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.